Greetings Church. Today is Monday the 27th of uh, July 2020 and I am right now on 4th Avenue and I am leaving Jefferson which is behind me here and um, right behind me here is the uh, is the city hall of our city and uh, across from that is the uh, that's the Barack Obama building and I'm walking uh, northbound on um, on, uh, on 4th Avenue. Well, good morning to you. I hope you had a great weekend, and um, I certainly had an interesting one. Um, yesterday, I uh, went to uh, uh, Laurel Hurst uh, Park out in the east on about 39th or so. It was um, Cesar Chavez um, Street, and um, you can take the bus 15 over there. It was very interesting. I, I got there about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I didn't leave until about 9 o'clock. When, um, when, um, when you get to the park, it's, it's really nice. There's uh, bikers, and um, there's not a whole lot. Just a lot of beautiful homes, and, um, and just really nice area to hang out in. Anyway, um, I came back about 9 o'clock, and uh, um, this is Lawndale's Park over here behind me. Uh, you can see um, that's uh, the other side of the uh, Justice Center over there, and uh, um, that's the protesters. And uh, this is a, a newly renovated building, and um, they just spent, like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to just, re it's like refurbishing furniture. Um, and they just got hit. <laughs> well, anyway, um, as I got here last night, it was really pitch black, and uh, there was some major activity. There was uh, major camera crews all around here. This is all, all pitch black. Um, I have no idea what was going on, who the speaker was, uh, but there was a speaker, and um, I don't know the group, so I don't know what was uh, what was what was going on. Anyway, um, I made a a right turn here um, at the um, at the uh, at the corner of uh, Main Southwest Main Fifth and Main, and uh, then went over to Pioneer Square Park, and um, I produced this um, this uh, this little poster here. I'll show you. It's the same uh, paper that I used for Bible study. I, I use this one here where it says, "Who is at the." Uh, heart of black life so you know the chanting is black life matters and I asked the question is who is at the heart of black life right and you can see in the middle there is uh, Satan or Jesus I wanted to know who is at the heart of black life so I'm just gonna show you across the street you got cleaners over there uh, cleaning up uh, I don't know it looks like they they have a ladder set up and they're about to uh, climb on top of the men's restroom and that's just the camp of the protesters over there. But anyway, um, so I was talking to them at Pioneer Square Park, asking the question. There wasn't too many people there, but the question was, who is at the heart of uh, black life, right? What exactly is black life? Is black life um, African-American life without, uh, without God? Um, is black life, um, what, is that, what is at the root of it? You know, um, is it when you think of black, you think of, uh, uh, you know, dark, spooky, scary, um, or um, is it, uh, you know, medical or is it a, a um, medical death? You know, when you think of black, are you thinking of color, the African-American um, life without the European? When you think of black life, um, you know, going back to African-American history and slavery and all of that and um Oh, so when they say black life matter, you know, take out the word matter. What exactly is the black life they're talking about? Um, you can see people over there um, with their ladders on top of Stephen Ness. I've used that store before, 7-Eleven. And so they're cleaning up the city for whatever the activity was last night. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But anyway, so that's what I preached on the passage that I used. I, first of all, I used Ephesians 6, um, um, that passage 10 through 18 um that passage about uh you know the what is it called the um the uh the armor 
you know, the armor that, um, that, that Paul talks about in uh, Ephesians. And then in verse 12, he says that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the powers of darkness, uh, the powers of wickedness in the, in the heavenly places. You know, is that the black life that, um, you know, these people are talking about? Right? Is it the spiritual darkness of the devil? You know, um, because Jesus Himself, we know that you know He never, um, He was never a part of any of that. You know that darkness um, in the in the Bible. It says that even on the day that He was arrested, right, um, and um, Peter pulled out a, a knife or a sword to cut off the head of Malchus, He didn't allow. Um, Malchus to lose his head, you know, or his ears. Instead, he um, replaced the ears back, and he says, "Those who live by the sword, by the sword, shall die by the sword." Right. So he didn't allow um, that. Not even on the day of his death. Right. So not even on the day of his death did he permit um, one of his disciples to strike the enemy um, as a result of, you know, as a result of. Um, of him needing protection, you know, the dark side of him didn't come out. So, you know, so I, I can't see Jesus being at the heart of this black life they're talking about simply because of the testimony of, you know, him healing and raising the dead and curing the sick and feeding the people and all of that. And as a result of it, you know, what exactly is it? And then I produced to them this Bible here, right, and a plastic knife, you know, one of those plastic knives, uh, but the color of it was black. And the question um, was, you know, which of these two, you know, when you go into, when you continue to read uh, that Ephesian passage in, in verse 17, uh, Paul says that the sword of the spirit is the word of God, right? And um, I know that there's been a lot of violence and a lot of killing. And so, you know, I asked, what, what is at the heart of black life? Is it, you know, that violence, the killing, is it, uh, um, you know, the whole color thing of the African-American community? Trying to figure it out, you know, um, talking my way through it. And um, so I was thinking it's either Caesar's sword using the plastic knife. It's either Caesar's sword um, or it's the sword of the spirit, right? And if it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, then, um, then I read to them Psalms 19, right? Um, and Psalms 19 basically says that... Uh, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. And I read to them from um, Psalms 19, verses 7 through 11. Um, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. Um, let me see if I can get it here real quickly. Yesterday I preached two messages. One was on Psalms 30, um, Psalms 37, um, the day of the Lord. And, um, and then another one on some, and on the, these two passages, Ephesians 6 and Psalms 19. And this is the spot where I actually preached the message here. We're at Pioneer Square Park. You can see all around. There's not a whole lot of activity. But this is the spot where I stood and I spoke yesterday. And uh, so I stood here and spoke. There wasn't anybody out, so there wasn't too many people. Um, but that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, you know, if you, re if you read Psalms 19... Uh, Psalms 19 basically tell you the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. The um, uh, I hate forgetting these passages of the Bible, but here, let me find it for you real quickly here. Um, it's kind of hard to, 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 to switch pages with uh, one hand and have the camera in another hand. And it says, uh, yeah... I said, yeah, uh, c converting the, the soul, the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The status of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes, and then and so on and so forth. But the whole point of it is that God's word uh, being, you know, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And this is what the Lord, this is what the word of God does. It restores. And so it doesn't seem like this movement is being led by the Lord. It, it doesn't seem like this movement is being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, or it's being led by the sword of, of, of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so I'm thinking, well, where, where, where could it possibly be coming from? I hope it's not coming from, you know, the kingdom of darkness. And I hope it's not coming from the devil himself. So that's pretty much it. And then somebody walked by and said, you know what? Religion is used to control people. And then after that, I just turned it up. But anyway, I got to get going. You stay faithful and I'll talk to you at another time.